we're going to look at the four different tissue types. Okay, so the first tissue type is epithelial. <coughs> epithelial tissue. So that's one of the bigger tissues in the body. Epithelial tissue covers surfaces and lines passageways. That's what it does. Covers surfaces and lines passageways. So what are some surfaces in your body? Your skin. Your skin is a huge surface, right? That's a surface. So your skin is made up of epithelial tissue. What are some passageways in your body? Throat. Like inside your throat, that's definitely a passageway. Um, your trachea, your windpipe, that's a passageway. Any other passageways? Intestines, like your intestines are a big passageway. They're big long tubes. So a passageway is like a tube. Your blood vessels, those are passageways, right? So uh, epithelial tissue is going to line each of those passageways. And we're going to talk specifically about epithelial tissue uh, in this segment. We also have connective tissue. And connective tissue is a big group. And so we're going to talk about that in another segment. Connective tissue is deep. So it's going to be deep to epithelial tissue. It has many different functions. We're going to see a connective tissue proper, which is going to cushion and surround certain things. Um, we're going to see a fluid connective tissue, and then we're going to look at um, uh, cartilage and bone. And those are all connective tissues, but we'll do that once we get to lecture. Then we have the muscle tissue. And muscle tissue, there's three different types. There's smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. And we'll talk about that later in a different segment. And then we have neural tissue. Neural tissue is contained mostly in your central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord. But then we also have peripheral nerves. And so neural tissue will be found in those two. Okay, so we're going to talk about all of those things later. What we're going to focus on right now is epithelial tissue. So this is showing an example of epithelial tissue. And so I'm going to go over some of the characteristics that all epithelial tissue has. Uh, the first thing is that epithelial tissue has what we call cellularity. And cellularity basically means that um, the uh, cells are very close together. They're kind of connected together. They, they form very close connections with each other. And we're not going to name the connections in this class, but you need to know cellularity, that they're just tightly packed together. Because they have to form a lining. And lining means that you're really not letting a lot of things through it, so those cells have to be tightly packed together. The next thing is that the um, cells in epithelial tissue are going to have a polarity. Polarity means that what happens on one end of the cell is going to be different from what we see on the other end of the cell, right? So we talked about cilia and microvilli before. We're going to see that the microvilli will be on one end of the cell, but they won't be on the other end. Okay? They're usually they're going to be on the, on, the, on the surface that's exposed to the lumen or the inside of that passageway, right? Because um, on the inside of the passageway, that's where nutrients are going to get absorbed into the um, cells lining that digestive tract. Okay? We also have cilia on one end, so these are the long finger-like projections. They're going to be on one end and not on the other. So on the surface that's on the inside of the passageway, that's called the apical surface. And on the surface that's deep to that, that's connected to the rest of the body, 
That's called the basolateral surface. So we have two surfaces to it. That just goes along with that sense that it's, it has a polarity, a top and a bottom. Okay. Also, what we see is that um, inside the cell, we have with this along with this polarity, we'll see a lot of the organelles like the nucleus and the mitochondria. They're all going to kind of hang out towards that basolateral surface. So that again goes along with that polarity. So along with that, because the apical surface is open to the inside of the passageway, the basolateral surface down here, that's gonna be attached to the rest of the body. And it's attached by what we call, you can see this, uh, you can see this layer right here, right, right down here and across. That's what we call the basement membrane the basement membrane, and you'll hear that term frequently. So that basement membrane connects that epithelial tissue to the rest of your body, right? The other thing that's um, unique about this epithelial tissue is that it is avascular, avascular. Avascular means that there's no blood vessels leading into this, right? So um, in, all, in a lot of the other tissues, we'll see blood vessels that are going to bring blood to the cells in the tissue, right? We don't have that in epithelial tissue. So if you think about your skin, right, that we said was uh, epithelial tissue that covers, your, um, covers you, right? It, if you cut through just the top layer, you get a little paper cut, you're not gonna get blood. You might get oozing out of some of that intracellular fluid, and you'll see a, a clear fluid leaking out, but you're not going to see blood because there are no blood vessels going into this epithelial tissue. Okay? Okay. Um, then the last thing is that these cells, uh, the epithelial cells, have the ability to regenerate. Right? They can regenerate. Normally, uh, what regenerate means is that they can go through mitosis and produce daughter cells. Now, not all the cells in your body can do that, but the epithelial cells can. Usually, if there's multiple layers of epithelial cells, it's going to be the bottommost layer that's connected to the basement membrane. Those are the ones that are going to be able to regenerate and go through mitosis, and they just keep pushing the new cells closer to the surface. So we're going to see that in a little bit. All right, now we're going to classify epithelial tissue. And epithelial tissue are going to be classified based on two things. The first thing is the shape of the cells. Shape of the cells, right? So there's... There's um, three main shapes. We have the squamous shape. So squamous cells are very flat. We have cuboidal cells. Cuboidal sounds like a cube, so the cuboidal cells are going to be square. We're gonna see those in a two-dimensional plane as square. And then we have the columnar cells, and columnar looks like column, and those are going to be tall and rectangular. So that's how we can classify them based on shape. The second way that we classify epithelial tissue is by how many layers of cells there are. How many layers are there? So if we have just one layer, we call that a simple epithelium, one layer. If we have two plus layers, two or more layers, we call that stratified. So we have simple or stratified, right? Stratified just means more than one. So now what we want to do is we want to look at a combination of those terms and look at specific epithelial tissue. Combination, I mean simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, 
or stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar. Okay, so we're going to look at a combination of those. We're going to have to know two things with these. One, for the lab exam, you have to know uh, what they look like, right? So we have clues as to um, what type of tissue this is. What do they look like and where are they found? Those are the two main things that you have to know, okay? So first we're going to look at simple, we're going to go over the squamous cells, okay? So we have simple squamous and we have stratified squamous. So let's look at simple squamous to begin with, All right? Now whenever you have a simple epithelium, it's very thin. The, you know, um, it's just one layer of cells. And so when we have a simple epithelium, the job, the function of it is basically to cross things, um, pass things across it. So it's, it helps with permeability. It allows the passage of things across it. Um, <clears throat> it. In other words, it controls the permeability of the passageways, right? So um, this is a picture here of simple squamous epithelium. And so when we look at the picture, first we're looking here and you're saying, okay, that does not look like it's one layer. But the thing is, the simple, uh, the squamous cells are so flat that you would not be able to see them on their side, right? If it were a simple squamous, because the squamous cells are so flat. So instead, what you're looking at is you're looking at it from a bird's eye view. You're looking down on it. And so we know that because you can't see a top and you can't see a bottom, so you know it's not layers. You know you're looking just straight down on it, okay? Um, one of the places that we find simple squamous is going to be in those, uh, those, those body cavities, right? In the ventral body cavities. Uh, but the main areas that I want you to remember where we see it, the picture here is showing that parietal peritoneum. So simple squamous lines, the parietal and visceral um, serous membranes, like the peritoneum, the pericardium, um, the, peri um, the pleura, right? But the ones that I really want you to memorize are that simple squamous lines the alveoli of the lungs. Alveoli of the lungs. The other thing it does is it lines your blood vessels. So those are the two main things that I want you to know for lecture. Because things are going to pass in and out of blood vessels. So we need simple squamous to allow that to happen. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are going to pass in and out <coughs> of the alveoli. I just noticed that the publisher here misspelled alveoli. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so that, those are the two places that I want you to memorize. This is the diagram that you would have in your lab exam. So you wouldn't have uh, any of the words, but you would have the pictures. <coughs> and the pictures would be able to provide you a clue as to what is that tissue type. You would have to type in simple squamous. Okay. This is a picture of stratified squamous. So stratified squamous, any stratified epithelium is thicker. It's got many layers. So whether it's squamous, cuboidal, or columnar, its job is going to be protection. So we're going to find that in areas where there's a lot of friction against that epithelium and it needs, it needs to protect the body, what's underneath. So stratified squamous epithelium then can be found on the skin, right? So your skin has many layers of squamous cells. We also find it lining the mouth, inside your mouth, right? There's many layers of squamous cells, so that's stratified squamous. So I'd like you to know those. But think of all the other passageways that get a lot of friction. The skin gets a lot of friction, just the air and your clothing and water and scrubbing and all of that. So it has to be thicker for that. The inside of your mouth, saliva and food and your tongue and your teeth are constantly bumping up against your, uh, the inside of your mouth, so that needs a stratified, um, it needs a stratified epithelium. And now in this case, you know, your skin, the top layer of your skin sloughs off constantly. The top layer inside your mouth is always sloughing off. 
And so that bottom layer, this is what I meant by regeneration. The bottom layer here is going to go through mitosis. One daughter cell will stay in that lower layer. The next daughter cell will get pushed up to one layer up. And that pushes all the other cells up towards the surface. So you're constantly regenerating that epithelium. It's constantly being replaced, right? So this is the picture, what you would have to identify it in lab. And then in lecture, you would want to know um, that it contains multiple layers of um, squamous cells and that we find it in the skin and lining the mouth. These other passageways that you see, they also get a lot of friction. The throat, the esophagus, which is where your food goes down, um, your rectum, anus, vagina, they all have a lot of secretions and a lot of friction um, in those passageways. At stratified squamous, let me show you this on stratified squamous, when you look towards the basement membrane, you see that, oh, those cells look cuboidal too. But that's not where we determine the shape of the cell. We determine the shape of the cell at the apical surface. So if you look at the surface here that's exposed to the lumen of the vessel or the lumen of the passageway, you can see they're flatter cells. They look more squamous in shape, right? So that's how we know that's a squamous epithelium. Going back to... Next, we're gonna look at cuboidal epithelium. So we'll start by looking at simple cuboidal. So here we know this is cuboidal because we look at the shape of the cell and we can see the shape of the cell is more of a cube shape, right? Whereas uh, when we look at, going back to simple cuboidal here, we can see that the, um, the cells here uh, in simple cuboidal, there's only one layer, but we can see that they are square. So that's a simple one layer cuboidal cell. It looks like this is a gland up here. So that's a separate tissue lining that gland. And again, you can see that those also are cuboidal cells. So that is simple cuboidal, okay? So where do we find cuboidal? Um, cells, they're a little bit thicker than the squamous cells, so they do provide a limited amount of protection, but they're still just one layer, so they're really not a lot of protection there. But we do find them um, in places like the uh, kidney tubules. Okay, kidney tubules. We're going to go through, at the very end of this semester, we're going to go through the urinary system and we're going to talk about the kidney tubules. They have cuboidal cells and they're going to allow things to be absorbed um, across them to be uh, taken back into your body, like sodium and glucose and other ions and nutrients, okay? So that's simple cuboidal. You have to know this picture. So if you're looking over here, this is the kidney tubule, this is the kidney. If you memorize the location and the picture, you're doing great, okay? Then we have stratified cuboidal. And stratified cuboidal, again, this is pretty rare. But if we look at the tissue itself, we can see that this stratified cuboidal epithelium is lining a duct. So this is the lumen of the duct. This is the inside of the duct. So there's going to be whatever secretions are going on inside there. That'll be filled up with some type of secretion. And we look at the tissue surrounding it, and we can see that there's multiple layers here. And if we look at the, uh, at the cells that are closest to that apical surface, we can see they look more square. So those, that tells us that it is stratified cuboidal. We have multiple layers and the cells are cuboidal. Okay. We also have, just to take a, a quick walk away from um, simple and stratified, there's another type of epithelium that's called transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium is, we call it transitional because the cells can stretch. And when they stretch, they look more squamous. And then when they go back to their original shape, then they look like they are cuboidal, right? So they change, they transition from cuboidal to squamous and then back to cuboidal again. And that's why we call it transitional epithelium. So we're going to find these lining organs that stretch, like the urinary bladder. 
The urinary bladder is what stores your urine. So the more urine that's inside that urinary bladder, the more that bladder has to stretch to accommodate that fluid. So when there's no fluid in there, when there's no urine in there, the tissue is gonna look more like this, where we see more square looking or cuboidal looking cells, right, at the apical surface. But then when the bladder fills up, we're going to see that the cells, um, they look like little ghosts. <laughs> um, this is actually the empty bladder up here, up here where they are square. They transition and then down here, they, uh, the bladder fills up and they kind of um, stretch out and they look, they look more stretched out. So you'd have to recognize transitional epithelium it, they do say that it kind of goes between the squamous and the cuboidal cells. To me, they look like little ghosts, but you would have this exact picture there, and you would be able to see that here they are when they're stretched, here they are when, they are, um, when the bladder is empty. And the urinary bladder gives a huge clue as to what's going on there. <coughs> Next, we're going to look at the columnar epithelium. So we're going to start with simple columnar epithelium. Now these um, cells, they look like tall columns, right? Real tall columns. And with columnar epithelia, we're going to usually see either microvilli or cilia on the apical surface. So we look at the apical surface, and you can see all of these little things here. Those are microvilli. What did we say microvilli did? Right, they increase surface area to allow for more absorptive areas, right? So we're going to find this in areas like the, like the intestines. The intestines is a great area that we can see those in, right? So when you're taking in the food, like the glucose and the amino acids, they have more of a surface to get absorbed into the cell and then eventually into your body, into the rest of the body, right? This is with a picture you're gonna see. You can see that each one of these cells touches the basement membrane and then they also have the exposed surface. So they go from all the way through that tissue, right? The main, the, because it is um, taller, it does have a protective function, but it also has an absorptive function with those microvilli. Yep. Okay. If we look down here, this is the stratified columnar epithelium. So this we find in um, its protection it's very, it's thick, those columnar cells, plus there's multiple layers. The function of it is protection. And we can find it in areas like the um, salivary glands, right? So this is a picture down here of a salivary gland, like the parotid salivary gland on the sides of your cheeks. And so all of those glands are going to have, they're a passageway. So there's going to be an, a lumen inside. So here's the lumen where all of the saliva would be secreted into. Right? So we find saliva in there. And then we look at the layers um, surrounding that tube and, or that gland. And we can see here's the basement membrane side. Right? So we're not going to look at the cells there because they're always going to look more cuboidal. And this is the apical surface on this side. And that's where we look at the shape of the cells. So we can see how the cells are tall and rectangular. That tells us that that is a columnar epithelium. And because there's multiple layers, we say that it's a stratified columnar epithelium. Now I want you to look at how organized those layers are. We have a deep layer, then we have a middle layer, and then we have the superficial layer. So we've got three different layers there, right? Very distinct layers. Now there's one other type of uh, epithelium that's called pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Hmm. Right? All right, so let's look at this. It's columnar. It's columnar. 
So we're looking for cells at the apical surface that look like columns, and we have them. There's the column, there's the column. We can see that they are columnar, right? Then we look to see that it says it's stratified, but it says it's pseudostratified. So what pseudostratified means is that these cells are not in very distinct layers. Some of these columnar cells, like this one right here, actually touches both the basement membrane or the basal lateral surface and the apical surface. It's on both ends. If it were truly stratified, it would be in its own layer, and then you'd have that second layer and then that third layer, right? but they're not truly stratified. Here's another one. You see it going all the way through the tissue. So it's not truly stratified. <clears throat> we see multiple layers here, but they're not distinct layers, okay? Um, so we find this type of epithelium in areas like the trachea, okay? So that's a good area to know that we see that. And if we look at the apical surface, we see these long finger-like projections that we call cilia. That's why we say it's a ciliated epithelium. And what did we say cilia do? That's right, they move things across the surface of the cell, right? So they're always swaying like that. So they're in the trachea, so that when you get mucus and dust down there, the cilia are constantly moving the mucus and the dust back up into your mouth so you can spit it out or swallow it down, right? So in your lab list, you're going to see this as just um, pseudostratified epithelium. And you can leave out the ciliated and the columnar. Okay? Pseudostratified epithelium. Because typically, the pseudostratified epithelium are always going to be ciliated and they're always going to be columnar. Right? So in the lab list, <clears throat> when you're going through the lab exam, you can leave it out or you can keep it in. Either way, it doesn't matter.